are you thinking of getting a new job in America? You may want to check this list out before applying. These are the most dangerous jobs of all time, and people in these occupations have risked their lives every day throughout history. The ranking of these top 10 most dangerous jobs are based on US statistics, so they may vary in other countries. Do you have any of the jobs listed in this documentary? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Truck Drivers Driving a heavy-duty truck remains among the nation's deadliest occupations, with on-the-job deaths of truckers setting a record in 2017. According to a report by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of heavy-duty trucking deaths has risen by 25 percent since 2011. Distracted driving, excessive speed, and lack of seatbelt use contribute to trucking deaths, just as they do to deaths of passenger car occupants. At least 38 percent of truck drivers killed in 2017 were not wearing seatbelts. Drowsy driving is another factor, especially in work zones, where heavy-duty trucks are responsible for 3 in 10 crashes. You're driving at highway speeds, and all of a sudden it comes upon you that there's a traffic stop ahead. For a large truck, it's not easy to stop. Truckers also spend long periods of time in interstate traffic bottlenecks near major cities, where distracted driving from smartphone use can lead to crashes. The Labor Bureau data also showed that for the fifth consecutive year, overdose deaths at work from non-medical drugs and alcohol increased at least 25 percent. About one in seven applicants for trucking jobs cannot pass a drug test, according to the National Transportation Institute. Number 9. Electrical Power Line Workers A pretty straightforward job when it comes to the amount of danger involved. Climbing up giant poles is risky, especially when you balance at weird angles to work on a line. Despite numerous safety precautions, these workers face potentially deadly conditions on a daily basis. More than 110,000 power line workers who construct repair power transmission and distribution systems face a wide range of serious and potentially fatal injuries, including electrocutions, falls from elevation, and injuries from falling objects. Major causes of non-fatal injuries include overexertion, electrical shock injuries, burns, sprains and strains, cuts and lacerations, and contusions. Younger workers are more likely to experience electrical injuries. Workers 16 to 17 years of age experienced electrical fatalities at 5.4 times the average for all age groups. Number 8. Roofers. Carrying heavy equipment, kneeling, bending, climbing, heat, wind, long hours. Roofing takes a lot of work. The physical strain often leads to carelessness to make the job easier, and workers don't always find it beneficial to wear their safety gear. When you're working so high up, this is a huge mistake. Besides the non-fatal injuries of nail guns, burns from hot bitumen, and other possible dangers, there's a huge risk of slipping or tripping on ladders, scaffolds, and slanted roofs. Falls from roof edges accounted for half of the fall deaths, or three-fourths of the fall deaths from roofs. For roofers in residential construction, falls from roof edges accounted for 70% of work-related fall deaths, and 90% of roof fall deaths. These statistics suggest that adequate roof edge fall protection is not being provided. Guardrails, safety nets, or personal fall arrest systems could have prevented most of these deaths. Number 7. Farmers and Ranchers With big toys and long hours, an accident is bound to happen. Unfortunately it happens a bit too often, about 307 times a year actually. Big businesses and small family-owned farms alike have to do repetitive jobs for long hours at a time, with very dangerous equipment and chemicals. Improper training, or even just a slight moment of unawareness, can lead to major issues, such as two tractors colliding, are you poisoning yourself? Then there's always the odd rancher who tried to walk behind a horse and got a horseshoe to the skull. Number 8. 
Number 6. Refuse Collectors. A job category ranging from the guys who pick up garbage after construction, to warehouse machinery operators, crane operators, and the guys who pick up your trash every week. 38 people total died during the year. Some jobs require you to work in extreme weather, at large heights, and do repetitive jobs for long hours. In big cities, trash collectors are constantly at risk of cutting themselves on glass and being hit by cars while loading garbage onto a truck. Along with physical hazards, even bigger issues are the toxins and chemicals that they are constantly exposed to that can cause severe long-term damage. Number 5. Steel and Iron Construction Workers These are the guys that build the giant metal frames for new buildings, bridges, and other large structures. Obviously not a job for the faint of heart, one wrong step can send you falling several stories high to a bone-shattering end, which is the way most of these fatalities have gone. Even using the best safety gear they can and strict rules stopping them from working in unfavorable weather, the numbers still float around 31 deaths a year. In the construction industry, the four leading causes of worker deaths not involving highway collisions were falls, being struck by objects, electrocutions, and getting caught in or between objects. Number 4. Lumberjacks. Equipped with already dangerous tools, lumber workers are pressured to work fast and hard, in places that aren't always ideal for a guy with a heavy, spinning saw. A lot of logging takes place on hills, where they are susceptible to high winds, falling branches, and hidden roots or vines. Though for a while it was the most dangerous job, most lumber companies are heavily safety regulated now. And the number of deaths has decreased in the last few years bringing statistics down to 64 deaths a year. Number 3. Pilots and Flight Engineers Most people think of the large commercial and passenger jets when they think of pilots, but these numbers come mostly from crop dusting and testing new and experimental flight equipment. Crop dusters work long days, expose themselves to chemicals, often land in stripless fields, and fly low, around nearly invisible power lines. But in recent years, pilots have encountered a new, rapidly proliferating threat camouflaged among the fields. One that has led to several deaths and safety officials fear could cause more. They are thin metal towers, almost 200 feet high, that wind energy companies use to help gather data on the best places to put wind turbines. Towers like these, temporary meteorological evaluation towers, or METs, can be erected in a matter of hours, and at 198 feet high, most barely skirt the 200-foot limit set by the Federal Aviation Administration requiring markings and lighting for safety. While some companies have responded to safety concerns and now paint the towers aviation orange, or attach colored balls to the guy wires, the industry in general has resisted recommendations for a public database. Number 2. Commercial Fishermen Commonly regarded as the most dangerous job you can have, the commercial fishing industry reports deaths every single year. With heavy equipment on board, rough weather, sudden storms, rogue waves, ropes all over, and nowhere to run when things get bad, the dangers here certainly aren't hidden. Vessel sinkings account for half of all fishing fatalities, second is falling overboard and deaths that are largely preventable. From 2000 through 2016, 204 U.S. fishermen died after falling overboard, according to a just-released study called Fatal Falls Overboard in Commercial Fishing by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH. Nearly 60% of the falls were not witnessed, and almost 90% of the victims were not found. Number 1. Communications Tower Workers Currently in the lead for most fatal job is the communications tower worker, a position new to the census of fatal occupational industries. 
Almost 1,000 television stations are scheduled to be moved to new channels by July 2020, and tower climbers are working on communications towers that can be 2,000 feet high. OSHA doesn't have rules specifically written to protect communications tower workers. The agency began working on such standards during the Obama administration after 13 communication tower workers were killed in 2013, more than in the previous two years combined. Why is this job so dangerous? Cell phone companies are constantly trying to build more, build higher, and build faster. Workers on towers may climb 100 to 2,000 feet. They risk falls, structural collapses, electrical hazards and bad weather. Aside from that, the carriers hire small contractors to build these towers. These contractors don't always have all the right safety equipment, and it is not always used correctly. If a worker is damaged or fatally injured, any bills or lawsuits go to the contractor since the carrier and tower owners are rarely on the construction grounds. And the phone company gets off free, most of the time. To top it off, due to the phone company not having to pay for these incidents, very little is being done outside of unions to regulate safety. Check out our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.